Hello and welcome to another edition of The Hard Foul. I am intern Joe alongside my co-host, the Colossus of Clout, the great Colin Taylor. Colin, back from vacation, how are we feeling? I am feeling great. Uh, I come back and I go on vacation and everything decides to, to happen, but we're here. Um, we're live after South Carolina just absolutely drubbed uh, LSU. And I usually tweet Wrigley pictures when things aren't going well. But I decided to bring Wrigley in for the little bit here. Uh, she's pregnant. She is due in like 10 days. So Ooh. she's a little sad but and lethargic. But she's uh, going on a nap here in a little bit. So we're bringing Wrigley in. And uh, she's, um, she's enjoying the South Carolina success here as I set her back down. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been a big weekend for the Gamecocks. Obviously, the men's team winning at Ole Miss, and then, um, you know, the women's team catching a dub over number three, LSU, and arguably the biggest women's game of the year. Um, so, yeah, a lot to get to today, a lot to get to. But, Colin, you want to you tell us who we are sponsored by? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are sponsored, as you can see up top here, uh, presented by Clint Hammond of the Movement Mortgage Network. Clint, um, a great guy, big old Gamecock fan, a guy that – Loves to watch South Carolina succeed, but also wants to help you find a home, find a place that you can call yours. Um, as you can see, branch manager there. All of his information um, right there, his NMLS number. I'm going to get that quicker next time. You see his email. You see his phone number. You see everything about him. Uh, contact Clint. Uh, get your stuff done by a Gamecock. Find a way to get a house. And, um, yeah, it's been that that's the guy that helps pay the bills around here. And, and we're thankful for him. And now we get to actually talk about some South Carolina sports. Yeah, absolutely. Colin, it's huge. What a big, I guess, getting into it, the, the game in question, the biggest one of the weekend is South Carolina and LSU. Don Staley's team gets it done in very high fashion against a very talented LSU team. A, let's see, sorry, a 20, 24 point W over the LSU Tigers to remain undefeated at 25 and O absolutely huge victory for Don Staley's squad. Colin, tell me what you saw today. South Carolina's best. Uh, we knew it going in, but South Carolina just reaffirmed themselves as the absolute 100% best team in the country. I don't know if there's a team right now in their same stratosphere uh, when we're really looking at it. Um, you just went to UConn, a top five team at the, at the time, uh, and you won that game. It, it got close late, but you go out there and you win. Uh, then all of a sudden, um, you know, you come back. Game of the century, game of the year in women's college basketball, maybe college basketball overall, one versus three. Angel Reese coming. LSU's undefeated. You're undefeated. And you come out there and from the jump, just boom, 6-0 run. They have to call timeout. And then every time LSU came back and made it close, you went out there and, and threw another haymaker. And one team came in as the best team in the country. And one team looked like the best team in the country. One team looked like they had been there before. This is not new to South Carolina. They came out there and said, all right, you know, these are the – we've been here. You know, Aaliyah Boston, Zy Cook, Bree Beal. All of these people are like, okay, we've played in a national title game. We've played in these kinds of scenarios before. Let's go be that. And you saw them come out and just lay haymaker after haymaker after haymaker. Um, you outscore LSU by nine in the first quarter. You outscore them. Um, I'm looking at it now. The second quarter was close, but then 22 to 16 in the third, and then 24 to 16 in the fourth. So um, that was a heavyweight fight that South Carolina went out there and just absolutely – freaking dominated yeah absolutely and i mean it was it was a domination from the start we saw that in that 6-0 run and then they just kept pouring it on um kim mulkey was very very upset calling that first time out you could see it she was not happy she kind of saw how the game was going and i mean you're right colin they this is a team that looked like they've been there before and you know they south carolina showed it from from start to finish really all of the experience you know, you got a lot of points from your starters, obviously 14 from Aaliyah Boston, 10 or 11 from Bree Beal, and then 18 from Car Camilla Cardoso, which is huge. The bench is another thing that came came into play here. And, you know, when we had our guy Chris Wellbaum on, 
Well, Bob talked about how how deep this team was, and and I think that's really key here. You know, going down the stretch and into the NCAA tournament, Well, Bob told us, you know, that this our ben, that South Carolina's bench could be a top ten team, and it, you know, today it showed. Um, Cardoso has a lot of length and showed it today, leading all scorers, uh, or sorry, not leading leading South Carolina in scoring with um, eighteen, and then you know you had Zaya Cook coming off the bench too, uh, seventeen. Zaya Cook a veteran on this team really, really showed that, you know, shot the ball really well today. And, um, you know, and it showed this team, you know, whenever LSU started to mount a comeback, this team rallied back and, and, and showed why they were, you know, on top, why they're the undisputed number one team in the country. And, and Dawn has their, you know, has those girls ready to play from the jump. And, you know, obviously this one was extra motivation and, you could tell Don had him really motivated. And, and after everything that Mulkey, you know, the Mulkey drama and everything this summer, and, um, you know, there was a lot on the line um, in terms of bragging rights here. And if LSU found a way to come in and, and, and beat you at home, you know, a lot of questions would be left going into the SEC tournament and, and the NCAA tournament. And obviously LSU doesn't have, you know, the, the toughest schedule left. So um, the winner of this game would likely, you know, take the number one overall seed into the SEC tournament as well as the NCAA tournament. So big win for Dawn's crew. And I, I mean, from this game, I saw a lot of, I guess, kind of the way Dawn played as a player, you know, from what I've gathered and everything, just very motivated and very, you know, hard nosed basketball and, and wanting it. This team wanted it more than LSU did. And you could tell, you know, they, they were, doing the little things right. They were playing defense, you know, sharing the ball too. It was an unbelievable team effort. And, you know, Don was able to, you know, kind of empty the bench there towards the end. And I mean, just an all around butt kicking um, from start to finish for the Gamecocks. They won this game shooting six threes. Six. That's it. That's all they needed to do. Yep. They shot 57.4% from the field. <laughs> uh, they shot 16 of 28. They could have won by more. They only shot 16 of 28 from the free throw line. Um, you're talking about you out rebounded LSU by almost 20. You had 14 offensive rebounds, um, 13 second chance points. Your bench outscored them by 20. You had more points in the paint. You assisted on 14 of 35 makes. LSU assisted on just five of 26. LSU is just like a, a one person, two person team, South Carolina. It's like, okay, cool. Eight players scored today. Eight for South Carolina. One, two, three, four, five of those double figures. Yeah. They can come at you from a lot of different ways. And that's not including Victoria Saxon only had six. That's not including some of these highly rated freshmen who are going to come in and play big minutes for you down the stretch. Um, either next year or in, in a couple years, you're talking about a team that, one team looked like they were ready for the moment. LSU put a lot of eggs in this basket and saying, you know, this is this is their Super Bowl, for lack of you know, t- pun not intended there. But, like, they didn't have a great non-con schedule. They kind of rolled through the SEC for the most part. Um, South Carolina challenged themselves in the non-con. They went up to UConn. They played at Maryland, if I'm not mistaken. You're talking about – a team that was battle tested and they came out and proved it. I mean, to throw that haymaker early, you get all the momentum, the crowd on your side. um, It was just huge. And yes, it was at home, which is a huge benefit for South Carolina. I, do you think they lose in Baton Rouge? Do you think this is a, a team that if they go to Baton Rouge, they lose this game? I don't think it's a 24 point win, but it would be hard for me to see this South Carolina team going there and not winning that game at some point. If, if they have, they're not going to go this year, but um, I don't think they lose anymore. Um, I, I don't think this is, if this is a bad reason. I don't think this one's changing results. Yeah, absolutely. And again, you know, you're right. If it, if it were in Baton Rouge, I don't think it would be a different result just because of how deep this team is and how well they played. I mean, they asserted every dominance. Every moment, every moment they yeah, can answer. From the jump. And it's like, you know, they prove that they are the undisputed number one team without any doubt, yeah. any doubt. And, you know, this was LSU's first, you know, a big complaint for them was that they don't play anybody ranked. And now they did. And, you know, South Carolina showed them for what they are. 
you know, uh, and and kind of showed that you know UConn is darn near a better team, almost yes. um, by by way of proxy, um, if you will. But I mean, yeah, just utter domination from the start. And you, you really can't speak enough to it about what Don Staley has done with this program. You know, a sellout crowd at Colonial Life Arena. You know, that building is really, really hard to pack. You know, for men's games, it it, it doesn't really it's, get like that. It's tough to pack regardless yeah. because it's such a huge arena. Even uh, for concerts. Yeah, it's a you tough know? place to pack. Absolutely. And so I think it's it's huge huge statement for you know what Don has built here to sell that place out and to have the atmosphere that they did on Super Bowl Sunday when you know people could be you know tailgating and, or pre-gaming and stuff like that and getting ready for the big game but no women's basketball trumped everything and that's huge huge day for I got another thing like for women's sports too like support women's hoops like that is the reason why you do it because you get a crowd like that out there that shows that women's basketball matters a lot it yeah. really matters. And, you know, shout out to Dawn for being able to pack that place. And obviously, like, I've, I know these are the Beamer shades, Colin, but, you know, they're, they're turning into celebratory shades now. That's um, it, yeah. Because, I mean, what a day. Like, really, and the whole, you know, the whole city was, you know, excited about it. And, you know, you could kind of feel the energy around Columbia. Just everybody was ready for this game. And, and boy, did, you know, the Gamecocks show how, how ready they were. They were pissed off. Colin, yeah. they, they played like they were pissed off and, you know, Don did a really good job. And another thing that we've been talking about is like, how does this team find motivation and how does this team stay motivated and not get complacent? Well, today, I think they showed all that and more. And I think come tournament time and everything, it's, it's just going to be that. And, and even more, this team is hungry to go undefeated. This team is hungry to keep improving. And I, I mean, <laughs> if, if they can keep improving, like, obviously they're, they're going to be some takeaways from today, but obviously not much, but like, I, that's it's a perfect ball game from, from start to finish and really yeah. no complaints for the South Carolina side. Yeah. South Carolina led for th it's a 40 minute game. Last time <laughs> I checked, right. If I'm doing my math, right. South Carolina led for 39 minutes and 53 seconds. I'm not a journalism major. That leads me to believe that the game was tied zero zero for seven seconds. LSU never led South Carolina led by as many as 24 points, which is their final margin of victory. And like you said, on a day, if this was a day in January or a day in March when things are, you know, really kind of the sports world is cranked up, it still matters, but it's not as, I don't know how impactful compared to what it would be today. Right now, you're talking about the men's basketball slate has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, just 15 games today on the men's side of things. Yep. Um, then you're talking about one game later today everyone's going to be paying attention to. Then that's about it. Like, there's not a whole lot of sports going on right now. The NBA had some stuff, but, like, the eyes of the sports world were really on Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah. And South Carolina went out there, threw a haymaker, and just never stopped landing body blow after body blow after body blow. And – you know, I've talked about it before on my radio show that you can listen to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, not I think nine to ten. Um, it's just a boa constrictor, man. Like it's not like there's this one moment where they go boom, ten zero run. They're up four, and now they're up fourteen. Like there's no moment like that in most of these games. It's just you you come out and from the jump you're just better, and you don't never really trail. There's never really any tough moment. It's just you you boa constrict them to the point of they just can't breathe by the end of it. And you look up and you're up 10, you're up 15, you're up 24, however many, you know, obviously they were up 24 today, but you just boa constrict them. It's quicksand and they just sink into it or they get wrapped up and all of a sudden it's boom, boom, boom. You, you're done. You're cooked. Yeah, absolutely. And again, like, on a day that you know, you know you're competing with the Super Bowl, and that was a couple of questions like, are they going to pack the place? And and sure enough, they did. I mean, it was it was great atmosphere. I I mean, obviously they would have won if they were still in Baton Rouge had they played like they did today. But I mean, the home crowd definitely helped with that, and to be able to you know kind of I guess compete with the Super Bowl and like everything that's going on, women's hoops took a forefront on ESPN. You know, and the energy level and just all of oh, the. Yeah. You literally cut from Super Bowl pregame coverage to 
Columbia, South Carolina Colonial Life Arena. Um, it's re- that was really cool. Um, South Carolina finds ways to just they win ball games, man. And you know, they, you have these kind of changing of the guard kind of games. Uh, you look back at when South Carolina beat UConn at CLA. That kind of signified, uh, all right, it's you know, tables a turn now. This could have been one of those games where LSU comes out, goes into hostile environment, and you know, wins, and then all of a sudden it's like, all right, now it's a two-headed monster in the SEC. No, South Carolina said no to that and just went out there. Um, you know what slapped them and, <laughs> oh, and and just said no. Like we're we're king of the mountain here. We're this is us, and and you gotta if you want to win the league, if you want to win the NCAA tournament, you road goes through Columbia, and they asserted that again today. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess my final note on this game is like my favorite part about it was that the Beamers kind of blended in. I thought it was awesome. You know, I saw a couple of pictures of where they were sitting pregame. It's not like they were courtside, and it's not like you know. I think Coach did a pretty good job of making sure that he wasn't the focus, and the focus was obviously on the court and all that. But I thought it was pretty cool that the Beamers kind of blended in. They were just there to watch the game, the product that that, that Don Staley was producing, and, and all of that, and, and these um, women on the court and everything. It was, I mean, great game from start to finish. Big game for the university. I mean, Don proved it once again that you know and. Also, too, she backed up everything that she said about the whole Gino thing right. um, and, and everything. And, you know, a lot of people were saying, is she going to back it up and all that? And, I mean, us being in Columbia, we we know that all too well that Don Staley doesn't say something unless she can back it up. And, boy, did she today. There, few people can truly talk the talk and walk the walk. Um, if we're building the Mount Rushmore, those, those people, Don Staley's on it. So, um, yeah, and we'll get to the stuff – about you know what's this mean? What's this look like moving forward later in the show? Because there was there is a men's game that we should probably touch on too. But yeah. um, just like I said, man, final thought from this one: you asserted your dominance again, and, and there was never really any doubt. They've been wire to wire the number one team all year. They they got up and they said, "This is a week where we play UConn." Auburn, which they drubbed Auburn, but two of our biggest games of the year come in a seven day stretch. How are we going to handle it? And they looked like a team that knows how to handle it is old and just, uh, they looked like the best team in the country and they backed up everything. They can take all these barbs and they'll gladly, they don't want to be the villain, but a lot of people make them to be the villain. And every single time something happens, South Carolina goes out there and just proves why they're the best thing in, in women's basketball right now. 